Rejoice, everyone. It's the Atheist Experience. Welcome back for another half hour of uh, fun and freestyle blasphemy on your cable channel. Ten, we are uh, live on Sunday, uh, March the 17th, 2002. Okay. I'm your host, Martin Wagner, David Clark, my co-host. And our guest for today is our old pal, Arlo Pignati, whom we're always happy to see and don't see often enough. Uh, and uh, Arlo's got a lot of fun stuff for us today, so this is going to be a really great show. We hope you stay tuned. Uh, this program is sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin. We are a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We have weekly meetings every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. at the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop, 307 West 5th Street, uh, between Guadalupe and Lavaca downtown. It's about a block west of Antones, except for the very first Sunday of each month, when we have our lecture series at First Cafeteria in the Longhorn Room in the back at North Cross Mall. That starts about 11 a.m. There's a brunch, what have you. Uh, next one of those will be April 7th, I do believe, and still no word on who our speaker is. Um, I remember hearing a few weeks ago on the uh, radio show that uh, Mary McManamy thought she might be trying to hook up another speaker for this one. But uh, having seen hiding your hair of Mary in a long time, I don't know what's come of that. But as soon as we know, we'll tell you. It'll, we'll and we'll also put it up on our lovely website on the upcoming events page. Uh, let's see what else. Um, uh, other stuff that goes on in our group. We have the uh, ACA Godless Gamers uh, meets every Monday night at the home of Jeff D. and Manda. Uh, <clears throat> about 7 p.m. For more information on that, talk to either Jeff or Manda. Or go to the ACA website and you can join the Atheist Gamers mailing list there where you'll be able to find uh, archived posts giving directions. ACA Happy Hour is Thursday now? Thursday. Thursday nights. We've sw they've switched it to Thursday and it's still at Antonio's Tex-Mex and near the intersection of I-35 and Research Boulevard, a uh, fine restaurant and um, with all sorts of yummy food and drink. And it's a great little evening meeting for atheists who have a hard time Get into the morning stuff, although I tend to never go to either. I, I went this morning. Yeah. Um, no, I like to try to make happy hour once again. I used to do it when it was closer to me, but haven't a long time. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, the Nonprofits is a uh, internet live internet radio show, also sponsored by ACA, hosted by Jeff D., uh, co-hosted by Mary McManamy, and uh, also including uh, Vic Farrow when he's available, and Russell Glasser, and whomever tends to turn up. Um, this is broadcast over the atheistnetwork.com website. Uh, it's live and interactive. There's a chat room feature where you can uh, talk to the participants on the show. And uh, it is at 2 o'clock p.m. every Saturday afternoon, atheistnetwork.com. Your web browser will need the real player plug-in in order to hear the audio stream. Let me see. Um, oh, right. The Atheist Alliance Convention. Well, there are two major conventions coming up at the end of this month over Easter weekend. One is the Atheist Alliance Convention in Dallas-Fort Worth at the Harvey Hotel. Um, I, I think some of our group are, are trying to make it to that. Um, if for more information on that, you can visit the uh, metroplexatheists.org website. That's the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, atheist group who are sponsoring that. And also in far off in Boston, we got the um, American Atheists uh, uh, annual convention. Now, our ACA is not affiliated with American Atheists, but you know, of course, there's a lot of um, cross talk, and, and we all sort of affiliate. We, you know, we we you know we're all pals now. Uh, and Arlo will be and Arlo there. is yeah, a you, guest. Even there. I'm not a member of them, but I yeah. still. Yeah, and I'm Arlo is speak. will be a guest there, delivering his uh, now world famous holy paraphernalia mm -hmm. show and tell roadshow thing, mm -hmm. of which he's here to give us a tantalizing preview. Mm -hmm. And you are uh, mm -hmm. being awarded. I'm going to get an activism award. An activism I award believe, yeah. for just uh, for your efforts with Remove the Ten. Correct. Uh, great. So I'm uh, so uh, very proud of both of these guys. I'm I'm still entirely insignificant in the <laughs> world of getting awards and presentations. Well, that's why we gave you this show. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's it. Yeah, this is my, my little my little band-aid for my ego. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> otherwise, um, I, so that's it. That's announcements. Here we are. We're live. Uh, glad you joined us on this overcast Sunday. Over to David for the news. What's All right, in the uh, world? we got a lot to to go over today, especially with some really fun stuff that Arlo is going to have. So we're going to we're going to go through the news, maybe a little quicker than normal. But okay. let's start with a, a little story in uh, Florida about an atheist license plate. Uh, after getting complaints, the state decided that a Florida man's license plate is objectionable and yanks it off his car. Stephen Miles had tooled around Gainesville for 16 years with a license plate that says atheist. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but apparently the, uh, the DMV uh, got a letter signed by 10 or 12 uh, Christians that said that's that, that, said that, wow, that they saw tradition. this license plate and they, they found it objectionable. So they sent him a letter and said, uh, we consider this objectionable. You need to send the plate back. That's it. To yeah. 10 or 12 people. That's it. Yeah. But so uh, he said, well, uh, that's not really going to work. Uh, he called the ACLU, uh, got uh, some atheists uh, from the uh, state involved, and they you know, wrote some letters. And the state changed its mind. Uh, they said that he can keep his plate that says atheist. Um, the DMV will now form a committee to review all tags that fall into a gray area before they are yanked. Uh, the guy, uh, Steve Miles, he's elated. Now I don't have to fight for what should be mine in the first place. But there's a bit right there that you said. He said the atheist tag would have been qualified Tied for committee review. Well, would a, a Jesus or a Christian yeah. tag well, be qualified? Next, yeah, Apparently, yeah, yeah, uh, maybe the, yeah. the, uh, the committee will review anything. If, if they get any any number of complaints, they'll review it no matter what. Yeah. And then say, I okay. mean, obviously, you don't want to have like anything obviously obscene or maybe racist. Right. Or a second or something like that. But, but this, I mean... Now, this all blew over in about 24 hours, right? And oh, yeah. Because yeah. it was such a clear and obvious case of religious discrimination yeah. that there's no way they could have, you know, uh, not avoided, you know, any major lawsuits and all sorts of... But, uh, yeah, so, but still, it, it's, it's, it's interesting to me. 10 or 12 people just, you know, signed a, a thing and uh, got to, just somebody had a knee-jerk reaction and so, okay, and... Yeah, it was just... So. Atheist, the word atheist is offensive yeah. and objectionable. Well, but, you know, but that it blew over in 24 hours means that, you know, we haven't quite reached the yes. theocratic state yes, yet. That's so. Great. So, good. Way to go for that guy for sticking up for his rights as an American. And we uh, would also like to add that we would personally not find objectionable any religious plate. I mean, if they're going to allow them, then they're going to allow them. If you got one that says, I love Jesus, then good for you and you should get to keep it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it goes both ways. Exactly. Yeah. I don't. I don't hassle Christians for having Christian bumper no. stickers on their car. No. No, I was hassled by one guy for having my Darwin sticker on the car. But I don't go and you know, if I see some you know Christian with absurd Christian bumper stickers, I don't go up and like get in their face. And my Darwin fish is often ripped off, so it's like well, see, they, think, uh, they think they're visual antsies. Yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't. I haven't. I had. I had one incident earlier some years ago with a bumper sticker. I had a bumper sticker that said "Tax the Church." Mm -hmm. And I went out the parking lot one day to find that it had been somebody who used electrical tape to make an X over it. So it was easy to, you know. Now, it's, it's interesting because I've since actually changed my opinion on that position. But, it was, mm -hmm. that's, but that's the only um, thing, that they yeah, thing, you know, in terms of vandalism. You know, it was, it was like, you know, soft vandalism that you <laughs> yeah. could easily. <laughs> yeah, he'll be able to pull it off. Yeah. So it was more like a gesture towards vandalism than the real thing. You know, it's like. <laughs> Anyway, okay, uh, let's move to Canada. No, not, not us move to Canada. The story's <laughs> from Canada. <laughs> All right. Uh, in Calgary, from? Okay. shunned by the Jehovah's Witnesses oh. he once embraced, he's now a lonely man, ignored by family and friends as if he were a wandering ghost. He's been lost for almost a month since defying his faith by agreeing to blood transfusions for his 16-year-old leukemia-stricken daughter. The 51-year-old 50, Calgary father who cannot be named under laws protecting, uh, no, the, yeah, who cannot be named under laws protecting uh, identity, knew he would pay a, a high price, typo. Even the girl whose life might be saved by his decision sometimes says she hates him. Wow. Uh, I was under tremendous pressure, he said, because I knew that if I went against what the church taught, that I would be excommunicated and no Jehovah's Witness would ever speak to me again, including my family. His wife now comes home only to do the laundry. His other two daughters, 14 and 22, want little to do with him. They have banned him from his daughter's hospital room where witness meetings are piped in over the speakerphone. Uh, he goes to work at an architectural firm but is ignored by friends. He says it's as though I don't exist. This is staggering. Because the Jehovah's Witnesses feel that there is a verse in the Bible that uh, says that, that they can't have blood transfusions. Yeah, that's right. Well, there, there's a few versions. Okay, now here's what's going on here, folks. We cannot understate the horror of this. This is a man, okay, who, who belongs to this deeply religious, has these deeply religious convictions, and yet he determined, right, that his daughter had this disease and she was going to die, okay? And he decided, you know, it's more imp I love my daughter so much, it is more important for me to save her life regardless of what it takes. And he did this, he saved her life, and he is now a pariah because of this. I, I'm, I'm speechless. I mean, this, is, this redefines inhumanity, people. I mean, 
For somebody to be so thoroughly indoctrinated into a religious belief that it becomes more important for them to preserve and maintain the religious belief, even at the expense of allowing your children to die, the, it seems to me the only way somebody can adopt that kind of thing is if you just completely flush your humanity down the commode. You have to relinquish your humanity. It is appalling. And if this is the Jehovah's Witness doctrine that you have to do this, that the, 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 the faith is so important that you must defend it even at the expense of your own child's life. And if you save your child's life, which any parent would do, you are to be ostracized. Yeah, I, I don't see any other response other than to just condemn the Jehovah's Witnesses utterly. Yeah. I mean, there's no other, there's, there's not, the Jehovah's Witnesses should be ostracized from the society. They're the ones who should be pariahs and outcast. Christian it's, science it's, comes pretty close to that, too, sometimes. Yeah, well, yeah, that's so you... You to use medicine. And, yeah, and so you're just supposed to lock yourself in a room and pray for healing yes. unless you happen to die, and in which case it's God, God's will. Yes, right, so, right. this is... I mean, words fail me to describe how, how furious I am about this situation. That's a, uh, and they were talking yesterday on the radio show that it might be a nice thing if there were any way... Because his, his identity is protected, but... If there were any way at some point to learn his identity, maybe once this blows over, to just bombard this man with letters of support. Yeah. Saying, you did the right thing. Yeah, I would, I would definitely, I would do that. I yeah. mean, it's just really, it's got to be very difficult for him. And yeah. It's a very sad story. I mean, it is very, very sad. I mean, it's, even the daughter whose life he saved. Yeah, she says that she hates him. It's, it's yeah. I, that's, I mean, that's th th no, it's poison. It's, 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 it's it, yeah, it's mind poison. Anyway, yeah. but we looked up, and I looked up one of the scripture references that they have about, um, you know, not blood transfusing mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And it's in Deuteronomy chapter 12. One of them is. That's the only one I took the time to look up. And, and, but it has to do with livestock. With like animal sacrifice. Yeah, burnt things. offerings, that kind yeah. of thing. It has nothing to do with like but, human but blood to human once blood. Once again, it's the, the book of multiple choice because, you know, if you go to the New Testament, you find verses that say that uh, to, to a, 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 a believer, nothing that you put into your body can defile you. So, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, isn't it? I mean, at the end of Luke, it says that you can even, like, just allow yourself to be bitten by poisonous snakes mm -hmm. and all as well. So, yeah, so. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, no. that's a sad one. Let's move on to another one. Six, six, six. All right. I mean, uh, West ran Chester. like that, but I'm Where's so West pissed Chester? off about that. Does that sound like Pennsylvania? Uh, it sounds like some New Englandy type place. You know, I always get the, le the, the mm -hmm. but I don't get the, in any event, it's in America. All right. Uh, <laughs> just just a, kind of a, apparently in Westchester. Mm-hmm. At the Chester County Courthouse. Does anybody know where that is? Did we say Pennsylvania? We're not Pennsylvania. sure. Pennsylvania? Mm -hmm. All right. We have a consensus. Mm -hmm. We may be wrong, but <laughs> Pennsylvania. All right. Uh, well, they're having a, a flap over a Ten Commandments monument in front of the courthouse. Right. So uh, several members of the Westchester Men's Service Club gathered in the early morning at the courthouse handing out flyers with the Ten Commandments, God Bless America, One Nation Under God, so on. Then they went down the street and asked business owners if they could put the signs up, Ten Commandments mm -hmm. signs in their windows, mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, you know, which is where they, where they should be. You know, it, when, if a private business yeah. owner wants to put them or, or a church, by the way, all these churches say we need to have the Ten Commandments everywhere. I have yet to see a church with a big Ten Commandments monument on its front lawn. Well, I'm you sure know? there probably are some. Put one there, but I, you know, but you, you don't yeah. ever see them. Yeah. Uh, so I understand, you know. It, well, right, that's the whole right. impetus be behind them trying to get that all this stuff out in public in property. Yeah. Play. They want they, they can't the get courthouse. people to come to their churches, so they want to be able to take it out to you where you're a captive audience and, and you know, in, in like schools and public buildings. Yeah, uh, one of the guys uh, quoted here, one of the citizens of uh, Westchester or Chester County, I said, uh, I'm all for separation of church and state, but the plaque has been there for 82 years. Um, so uh, I think that the, uh, I think the First Amendment's been there longer. Yeah. Uh, Is there a statute of limitations on violating the Constitution? The Ten Commandments are generally good principles to live by. They're just the basic principles of a civil society. Jews, Christians, and Muslims—they all believe in them. Uh, Holly Brown, the owner of a, a what about what store. about Wiccans? And well, here's the, so, yeah. that's explained too. Oh, I Holly see. Holly Brown, the owner of a clothing store. Uh, said she was not concerned that some customers might be offended by the Ten Commandments flyer on the front of her store. It can be anybody's God, she said. Forgot but it's, about, forgot about that. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the order given by the yeah. same God that said, kill all the other tribes that don't believe in me. Mm -hmm. This is not anybody's God. 
Yeah. If you say it's anybody's God, you're just watering down your belief to till it means nothing. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah, exactly. If you want to do that, go ahead. Uh, mm-hmm. all right. yeah, but if they want to put it, private businesses, oh, yeah. private, private residences, private. churches, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Ten Commandments, any private citizen can express their religious faith any way they want to. That's yeah. okay. So technically, I mean, so what they're doing there in that in Westchester is okay. Right. In terms of, well, except of course they still have the monument up. Right. The, the focus of it is to get people to defend keeping, to defend them, keeping yeah. the monument on the courthouse lawn right there. But yeah. But uh, yeah, just another another example. Uh, this yeah. happens all over the place. Yeah. Uh, Florida, a good one here. Florida's highest court has ruled that the Constitution's guarantee of religious freedom does not protect churches from lawsuits alleging sexual abuse by clergy. Got the First yeah, Amendment does not on. provide a shield behind which a church may avoid liability for negligent hiring and supervision of its clergy members, the court said. Mm-hmm. Giving immunity to religious institutions in such lawsuits, the court said, could place them in preferred positions over secular institutions. The ruling puts Florida in line with the majority of other state and federal court jurisdictions. Now, you know, okay, this isn't obvious. This is a no-brainer. But what disturbs me is that the court would not have had to have made this ruling if it weren't going on. Had the, had the church not tried to advance that ruling. In other words, when the, when a court makes a ruling, when, when the, the, the court comes out and says, this is my opinion, they are directly addressing what's put before them, which means that the church came to them and said, this is a First Amendment. This is a freedom, for, a freedom of religion issue. Mm-hmm. That's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Just disgusting that, well, they, they, just, that, that the church would even try to hide behind freedom of religion to say, to Guess protect what? criminals. Yeah, and, when we yeah. commit crimes, they don't have to be reported. Mm-hmm. Who cares how many children or, or whatnot are hurt? That's just sick. And there's a hypocrisy of the whole situation where, you know, they will call upon the First Amendment and separation of church and state when it suits them, but, but they, they repudiate... it doesn't exist every other time. Yeah, but when it comes down to, like, prayer in school or something, they completely repudiate separation of church and state, and they're like, oh, no, this it is... doesn't th- exist. This is inhibiting our religious freedom. with children. Yeah, so whatever. Yes. Um, well, the state made the right decision there. Yes. Uh, Russell, Kansas, I, Kansas? Yes. Russell, Kansas, I believe. No, Kentucky. Lexington. Where's Lexington? Kentucky. All right, Kentucky. Russell, Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. We got That's it. A, we got it narrowed down. Russia. I never get the, the damn need to get our American I know. They always yeah, just put the towns put, on the thing. All right, in Russell Springs, a teacher's prayer group was involved in an effort to get dozens of books dealing with ghosts, cults, and witchcraft reviewed for possible removal from the library at Russell County High School. God revealed to the group that the presence of the books was one reason that his manifested presence hadn't yet come to the school to change the hearts and minds of the students. According to a uh, letter from one member of the group, he, meaning God, cannot come into a place that is corrupted. We must not allow for these books to continue polluting the minds of our teenagers. Wait, there's something God cannot do? Yeah. Apparently not. So he's not omnipotent, uh, I guess. They this God proof to the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they put a, I need to get those books. The, then. The, <laughs> they have that special God proof oh, vinyl don't. siding on the, yeah. Yeah, the library. Now, this building. is a teacher's group at the school. And what I'm thinking here is, you know, they really need to quit and go work at a religious school. Yeah. If yeah. that's what they want. Mm-hmm. But they can't, yeah. they shouldn't be coming in trying to change the county public school to their own little version of God. Gosh, this place belongs to God. Yeah, well, they've been doing uh, it for you know, years, it's just, but it's, it's just crazy. But of course, that old bugaboo Harry Potter and everything. This was this, wait, wait, this is an elementary school? No, no, uh, Russell County High School. High school, okay, because the elementary school in Austin banned some books, and uh, well, I don't know if they did it yet. I stopped working. I was an assistant teacher, and there was this wonderful set of books called Serendipity, and it taught kids about. Uh, Polluting the environment is wrong, but it had some fictional characters in it, like a, a pink dinosaur or something. Mm-hmm. And it talked about there was one animal saying about another animal how it was his so cousin. That was gay, like the Teletubby, right? And actually, yeah. it was it, it was too <laughs> pro-evolution because they were calling each the walrus was calling the dolphin a cousin, Ooh. and it, it really frustrated the hell on me because I I, yeah. I would read with those particular books with children. They were trying yeah. to remove those. Yeah. Well, well one other thing that she, this, <laughs> this group of teachers put in the letter, God spoke to my spirit that we must do house cleaning. As a Christian teacher in the public school, God has showed me that it is my responsibility to take a stand and lift my voice. This whole idea of like... Let's emphasize public school. Yeah. Well, this whole idea about this invisible man spoke to me and said that I needed to do this stuff. I mean, aren't we in like Andrea Yates territory here? Well, and, I mean, if they teach, if they have a psych, they don't have psychology classes in yeah. high school. But if they did, they could use her as an example. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, and our last little story before we get to the good stuff that Arlo has. Oh, oh this summary. is equally horrible. In a yeah. recent fire in the city of Mecca, Saudi Arabia, the religious police, which I believe actually are called the uh, Committee for the Commission of Virtue and Prevention of Vice. Yes, for the Protection of Virtue Protection and the Prevention of Vice. Yes. Refused to let schoolgirls out of a locked burning building because they were not dressed in a manner appropriate for, being, for women being outside in public. The religious police also stopped firemen who were attempting to save the girls, saying that approaching them would be sinful. They beat the girls to get them to go back into the school. Fifteen girls died in the blaze. Isn't that just lovely? I tell you. Just, uh, well, just more examples of how religion enhances our lives and makes everyone love each other more. That's right. Arlo, cheer us up. Yeah, yeah get us off of this Boy, uh, evil, evil news. Yeah. Okay, how horrible, can I, horrible stuff. How can I explain myself? I'm an atheist who shops at religious stores, Christian <laughs> shops. I, go to, I order things from Islamic catalogs. Why do I do this? Because religion entertains the hell out of me, and I like the <laughs> best of it. Some of it is some of it's really frightening. Some of it's just ridiculous. Some of it's funny, and I love putting it together into a presentation I call Holy Paraphernalia Mania, where I show it to. You know, mostly atheists or free thought groups, and no mm -hmm. one appreciates this stuff better than atheists. Mm -hmm. You know, Christians always think when they hand out those little tracts about going to hell, yeah. they assume that you know we're too ignorant to read them, or we'll read them and we'll convert. But really, yeah, I think we'll, people should read them. Well, I collect those things. I, I, I yeah. like them too. That's the good thing they don't say about the no, chick no, tracts. They 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 produce these chick tracts with the idea that that an atheist will actually read one of these and go. Mm. And there's fictional you know? characters in but the chick tracks so being converted because it doesn't happen in real life. Yeah, yeah. So, so they have to have their But I'm not talking about chick tracks today. Oh, they're strong I, I already covered place. that on another show. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's lots of other little items. They're always Boy, there. Christianity, among other you know, spiritual things, can be very materialistic. And um, once on the show, I brought uh, Testaments. It's a Christian breath mint. Oh, and yeah. And now they have... New Testament bubble gum. All right. And I don't I don't know if there's such a thing as Old Testament bubble gum, but and it's each one is each that one would, is wrapped in scripture. And are, are know, they yeah, different flavors for the different uh, testaments or they or, did with the with, they did with the breath mints and I presume the Old Testament would be breath. flavored like the blood oh. of a of a bull. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah, they had little crosses engraved on them. I haven't opened this yet, so I don't know what. Hey, well, let's check it out. Come on. Open. You want but, to? Or do you not want to? Uh, I don't want to take the time. To okay. I well, can't talk and chew bubble gum. Can you? Mind if I? Yes. Yeah, go. Go for See what it. we have here. Yeah, okay. Give me a piece after the show. Five sticks. And want more piece? Oh, sure. yeah. I got yeah. to explain this. Uh, this was given to me as a gift from a good friend of mine who's an, who's an atheist who uh, he collects a few t-shirts. And he gave me this one as a gift, which I'm glad. Can we zoom on this a little bit? Um, this is called Lord's oh, yeah. Gem. It's, it's the most blasphemous thing I've ever seen, but it is an actual <laughs> Christian t-shirt made by Christians for Christians. It's in every Christian shop. I used to go to a gym, and there, there are always like two or three people wearing this thing. Uh -huh. It shows a big, buff, muscular Christ doing push-ups with a cross on his back, and it says, Bench press this right here, <laughs> and these are and it's and these are the sin of the world, right? Right. Well, That's I guess the, you're supposed to hold it upside down. He's he's lying across bench uh -huh. pressing the earth, I guess, for eternity. I don't, but I'm I notice sure. he doesn't have his hand wounds. Look, he doesn't have from his nails. Well, he had to heal himself temporarily so he could do the push-ups. I mean, <laughs> oh, come on, what kind of bodybuilder is that? Well, there's blood. No there's, pain, no gain. There's blood dripping out of his mouth. These things are so gruesome. I just can't believe it's, it. Oh yeah, yeah. There's. I wonder a little... if I can show you the back. Yeah, let's uh, I don't let's know if I can well turn around. Oh, okay. There's 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 the wound. The yeah, there. that's the Dear. official Christianity seal of approval when it has you know blood, real bloody, gory pictures. Isn't that all lovely? Over it. Yeah. And I used to tutor at a at an elementary school here in Austin, as as I mentioned earlier. And um, I t I taught a pre K class and I assisted a second grade class. And I'd seen students wearing shirts with that hand with the nail through it, spewing blood all over the place. Four-year-olds wearing this. I mean, of course they're too young. To and they don't the like, and they don't want to see Mar Marilyn Manson t-shirts in the right. schools, yeah. but they, they're okay with it. Yeah, um, very gory stuff. Oh, by the way, I thought we'd mentioned that uh, these, this Testament's chewing gum, they have, uh, the wrappers have little scripture, don't zoom, it's too small. Yeah. But the rapture, they, they have little scriptures on them. Uh, what, which one did you get? Uh, Ephesians uh, 2, two five, 5, it is by grace you have been saved. Uh, and the mind, but you mind, haven't. <laughs> mine's, is, mine's is Colossians 3 2. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Chew on that. Oh. Well, mine has another one, actually. Mine has another one. It says, uh, it says Jesus saves by using coupons and shopping wisely. Mm -hmm. no. Oh, my God. All right. Anyway. All right. But uh, they also have Christian fortune cookies. Kind of dry, but it's all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to mm. show off this one other shirt, also given to me as a gift. <laughs> it's the Energizer Bunny Burning in Hell. <laughs> 
it says, it keeps burning and burning and burning. <laughs> and it says the infernalizer on the drum. Infernalizer? Okay, yeah, and what's now, the back? Stay, I used stay on the, the Well, on the back, that shows the infernalizer. Now, I used to wear this, this nice shirt. nice, upbeat Christian burn message. or burn. Oh, yeah. yeah. I used to wear this shirt, but I stopped now because I learned very quickly it makes children cry. <laughs> so, uh, well, so so that's, a, that. that's a good-looking incinerated bunny, though. I mean, I Isn't that the purpose, though? They <laughs> want children to fear it so that they'll believe it. Now, right. what's the scripture against us here? So, John, <laughs> well, 2 that's Peter 3, well, 9. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But he'll burn you anyway. But he'll burn you yeah. in hell. All right. All right. Yeah. Wow, that's that's oh, very family friendly. Uh, I stopped wow. by a Christian store on the way here. One of these I already had. I got some new things. Wait, show the bumper sticker first. That won't take long. The bumper sticker. Yeah. Oh, right. What's amusing is Russell, show the yeah. There is, is a it? bumper sticker that uh, well. Oh, go ahead. I, I didn't expect to show it. Okay, so. do what you're going to oh, no, do. I, I didn't mean to throw you off. Oh, well, here it is. is. This and now okay, we figured out what this means, but it says Jesus is coming soon. Are you? E, and, and I didn't get this at first. I went by three Christian shops and asked the employees, and all these shops sold this, asked them, what does this mean? I don't get it. And none of them could tell me. This has happened before. Once before, yeah. there was a uh, bumper sticker that showed a beat-up, dirty teddy bear with smoke coming out of its head, <laughs> and it said, uh, please be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. And uh, that one they didn't know either. <laughs> yeah. They're selling it. You but know, the, and they, but give about it, it's, they give a discount on it because yeah. it didn't but, make any but sense. Going, <laughs> and, but it took an eighth. So, so it, what it does our Bible's like fit, in yeah. our studio to figure it out. Russell Glasser, our it's, producer, figured this out. It's a red E. So are, are you ready? Okay. See? I get it. I wonder if people put this on a so, car so and didn't figure it out. So not only is it we figured it out. Punny. Punny. Put on. But this is my most prized possession. Here we go. This is a creme de la creme. Here. There is a, a vi very violent Christian children's show called Bible Man. Man. He's a per big purple fundamentalist Batman. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Bible Man, it shows like Bible Man versus a gossip queen where he's like slaying prostitutes with his glowing lightsaber. And it's terrible. <laughs> that sounds a little strange. He beheads, there. He beheads yeah. a woman at the end of the show. Slaying well, that's And this is to teach Christian saber. values. And uh, so here's Bible Man, the, the Christian superhero. He comes with this little <laughs> lightsaber that you can put in his hand and you can kill people with. Or he, there's a little Bible that he comes with and you can put that in his hand and beat people with it. <laughs> and, and on the back, it says, Who is that masked Christian? <laughs> I love talking about Bible Man because this has got to be the most ridiculous things. And before I show you the next thing, I give a little introduction. You see, the Lord looked down on Bible Man and saw that Bible Man was very lonely. So he took from Bible Man's oh, no. rib no, 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 and made no, no. Bible Girl. Uh, Bible Girl. Now, and does it come with a little, little she apple just, that she eats? She, she comes with a little shroud and she has a little price. holy price. Bible oh, there. Oh, cover up the... Price up. Oh, I have to yeah. cover the price, but I will say it was on it was on sale because you know <laughs> no, no, no Christian kids want a, a woman now, Christian like a, superhero. Like a good, uh, like a good uh, biblical woman, I assume that her mouth is taped shut <laughs> and uh, she's not daring to speak to a man and teach. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna read some Bible man. Um, I'm gonna have that up. You can just look look at that while I read mm. this. On the BibleMan.com, I think is the website, you can read the specifications for all the characters that are in the show. And it's oh, hilarious. Cool. So, like, I'll just read a few of the best specifications off of each character. Okay, Bible Man, occupation, school teacher. <laughs> No. Favorite color, purple. Of course, the color of kings. Oh, so I it's forgot. Like Prince, right? I forgot one of the action figures. Cipher. He's a Christian with these razor sharp razor blades. It's a frightening <laughs> thing. He's like a cyborg side. He's like a cyborg Christian sidekick to uh -huh. Bible Man. Oh boy. Anyway, occupation. Bible Man's partner. Favorite color, black. And the, and the guy's black, so I don't know if they're uh, a little so lack of creativity, and that's well, what they came up with. Maybe that. they're a gesture towards being racially diverse, I guess. I yeah. think so. We, we offend all races equally. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's evil robots, and there's good robots. These little flying holy machines and Satan machines. There's one called Lucy, L-U-C-I. Uh -huh. Function, being nasty. <laughs> Profile. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Profile. Profile. <laughs> Voice activated and is able to find worst trait of any person who enters a sewer. Well, just don't enter her, the sewer. There, that's easy. <laughs> her cryogenic subliminal database are able to hack into almost any computer system not protected by the word of God. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did, did you say that uh, able to find the worst trait of any person yeah. that enters the sewer? Yeah. yeah. 
doing this too. I don't, so, I don't get it. I, I missed that episode. Yeah. So right. he has this army of like, uh, you know, aborted fetuses, I guess. That are <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that was beyond tasteless. Then no. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. No, they, but they, but now a computer system not protected by the word of God. No, is um, well, that's must what be like Microsoft or something. Um, um, Eunice. That's what I call a firewall. Yeah. Eunice is Bible man's like floating killing machine robot, and its function is defeating evil, uh -huh. programmer, classified, so we don't know if that's that's Mac <laughs> or DOS or what. El Furioso, El the Furioso. evil, he's like an evil, like, evil Hispanic Darth Vader. He, <laughs> occupa I'm Mutt Manuel. <laughs> <laughs> Occupation, Satan's <Yeah>. minion. <laughs> Favorite color? No favorite color. Yeah. I guess because he's evil. Yeah, he doesn't right. have a favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> Profile: El Furioso. Now this teaches children favorite all about psychology plaid. and where and where problems come from. El Furioso sprinkles gold fury dust on his victims, thus entering their bloodstream. Once inside the body, the gold fury stimulates the brain cell synapses and causing fits of anger. Oh, I get it. It's a drug thing. It's a metaphor for. I. I guess. Yeah, it's like you know. Heroin, and then there's so, yeah. look, looks or Spandroth, which he's like this. He's like this Alistair Crowley look-alike character <laughs> uh -huh. on there. And they have all these dolls. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Action figures. Action figures. Profile: Luxor Spanworth infects victims with the germ of disobedience. <laughs> when infected, the victim's sensory perception is distorted, thus inhibiting the study of the Bible verses. <laughs> <laughs> Not finished yet. This infection creates an <laughs> wait. No, it gets better. This infection creates an allergic reaction that makes the victim do the opposite of what God wants. <laughs> <laughs> They're teaching children that there's this like evil guy like prancing around, sprinkling the stuff on you to make you misinterpret Bible verses, and I guess become <laughs> Unitarian or Catholic. <laughs> Uh, oh, good. Okay. I'm surprised they didn't call him Lutheran Spandworth. <laughs> okay, and then there's uh, Ludacris, a little sidekick of Satan. Wait a minute, they have a character called Ludacris? Ludacris, because he's Satan's sidekick, and his oh. favorite color is cottage cheese. I don't know what he is that. <laughs> oh, and Bible Girl? Her occupation is student at Randalltown High School. <laughs> oh, so Bible Man goes for that, like, jailbait jo <laughs> thing going on. Yeah. Going for underage women. What are you talking about? And Not good, yeah. Back to this. This is wow. my Bible Man Senior Bible Corp certificate. I'm officially a member of the Bible Man Bible Corps. Wow. And the way I got this was by answering nine out of ten questions about the Bible online. Ooh, oh, you did? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm going to have to get that. Mm hmm. And, so, uh, what do you get as part of Bible Man's Well, I thought they would send role. me, like, you know, some kind of, you know, futuristic weapons or something, but now they didn't send me anything. But. Oh, and this is weird. Bible Man Family Cruises. <laughs> this shows these people are making money. Yeah, look at that ship. Well, you can anybody book a ship if you. Bible Man Family Cruises, where you get to see Bible Man live, and there he is doing a little strip tease Ooh. for like <laughs> what, the world. The yeah, isn't that star. weird? Yeah, yeah that's talking about, a little the, talk, talk about the trappings of the world. <laughs> yeah, we're talking like Ausfest territory. And now. also talk about no original. Another now, now, okay, yeah, these are action figures, not dolls, but there's something for dolls too. Ah. There's this little. Little Mar Mother Mary outfit that you can put on your Barbie dolls to make them versions, and uh, <laughs> and here's a, and I have actual I have an actual quote. Wait a minute! Wait! Whoa! <laughs> so they're like anatomically Virginize, correct Barbie dolls that aren't Barbie. versions, and that somehow Barbie the clothing give... does something to transform. Well, yeah, they just make her look like that, and they can pretend she's a Virgin Mary. And boy, wait till Ken gets home. Look at this. <laughs> here's a quote from the commercial. Think how much fun your daughter will have playing Christmas Story when she uses this outfit to transform her ordinary 11.5 11 inch doll into the Virgin Mary, in addition to the dress, veil, and sandals. And you know, that's that's the size, it's it's aimed towards uh, Barbie's yeah, there. I'm sure she'll just have all kinds of Look at of this fun. thing, this thing's supposed to be Christian. It's a cucumber with plungers sticking out of its ears. <laughs> <laughs> it's a character from, it's a character from Veggie Tales. Because, you know, we all learn about Christianity from vegetables, right? Right, right. It's yeah. computer animated vegetables that teach children about Jesus. And it says, using VeggieTales puppets, you can teach kids biblical values. No, I'm sorry, I'm not convinced. Yeah, are the plungers, is the plunger supposed to signify the sewage going into the kid's head? <laughs> well, wait a minute, what's all this about burnt offerings and the animal sacrifices? And, you know, I mean, why don't they have, you know, cheeseburgers and, you know, sides of meat? With plungers. Uh, the plungers, yeah. What's up with the, with the plunger? I don't know. I, I, I can't make the connection there. There's even one made by Fisher Price where it talks. 
and I thought, oh, maybe it says Christian things. And I, pu I pushed, you like push its belly button, uh -huh. and it goes, ear suction cups away. And yeah. I'm still <laughs> ear suction cups away. Yeah. Okay. Oh, another character. Now there's another character for children. Dreamed out of the head of Jim Baker. He's since been in prison, and there, you know, there's his book, I Was Ron. Yeah. <laughs> and what are these little... Ooh, and he has a camp for children called Camp Hope. And what are these little footprints we see here? Well, it's a, it's a Christian mascot called the Born Again Bunny. Hubble hair, the Born Again Bunny. Not burning like the incinerator yeah. bunny. <laughs> no, this one's going well, to he happen. changed batteries, I guess. My friends call me the Holy Rolling Rabbit, the Born Again Bunny. <laughs> the most fun we have here is praising the Lord every day. We praise him even when we eat barbecue. And that, sounds like, that sounds like a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even what, Jesus Day Jesus Off. Jesus Day Off. This, All right. This looks like a joke, right? Now, all this stuff is authentic. I got to remind uh -huh. people, this is all sold in Christian shops. Like this a is Christian real stuff. version of mall rats. Yeah. This is Jesus' Jesus day off. And there he is kicking, hey, John, a hacky, he, kicking a hacky sack through his halo. <laughs> <laughs> he shoots, he scores. Well, he's, um, you'd have to be omnipotent to do that. Oh, I forgot to bring the quote from the back of the book, but it, it says something along the lines that says, you know, Jesus gets tired of performing miracles, and when miracles start going wrong, he takes a day off. And it, no. it when, sounds totally When miracles it. start going wrong. Look, yeah, you can look this up. Uh, he takes the day off. So he's kind of, so he's like a plumber, right? You know, he comes, fixes your plumbing. And then it messes up again, and gee, you just can't get them on the phone to save your life. I was looking at book <laughs> reviews of that. Boy, are they mixed. Some you read Christians the book? I mean, love you have it. The book? Atheists love it, and, but there's fundamentalists who absolutely hate it, of course. <laughs> I, I can see why. Boy, I, no, I don't have the original. It's very expensive. I yeah, this I used to buy Testament these things. Verse. Yeah. <laughs> don't really last very long. I used to buy these things, but I, I'm tired of giving these people money. I, well, I, I can't keep doing it. Yeah, that. there so, comes a point where... I'm just taking pictures of things running out of the store. <laughs> 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 Full armor of God. Ooh, it's a little yeah. armor set children put Asians. on. And it says, this costume helps them understand exactly what it will take to battle unrighteousness. Yeah, medieval weaponry. To go along with medieval thinking. Yeah, and well, of course well, you got your army of God. Well, yeah, hat. yeah, let's indoctrinate the children into the army mindset there. Yeah, yeah. army of Great. God t-shirt, very um, nice and militant. And then you got yeah. your army of God bucket hat. Yeah, nice. Um, and uh, and huh. this this little cap Give here it says, "I am an alien," and that is the quote huh? from John seventeen sixteen. Uh, yes, kind of oh. weird. It says, "They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world." So they're promoting that Jesus is an alien. Yeah, uh, Christians, that's this is wait not a minute. Real, this is not their real home. They're aliens because their home is in heaven. But what an odd way to you know just <laughs> odd thing to say. Yeah, I mean it's it's a way to make you look stupid. Mm. Oh, and that's and the advertisement. Uh, for that, I think it was pastor.com or something. The advertisement for those was uh, Christian clothing that doesn't make you look stupid. That's their slogan. <laughs> That's our ta tagline. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's Just not tagline. Quelling, uh, is it? Oh, my goodness. Jesus crucifixion ties. And then there's this one where if you're wearing a suit, it looks like Jesus is walking right out of your suit. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> knock, knock. knock but it you says. know who the master of t making religious ties are is the Mormons. Ah, they are fun. The Mormons, aren't those lovely? They yeah. have a tie for every church in the world, which you know is like over fifty ties. You got your Moroni angel socks. Mm, uh, angel the little Moroni. Moroni symbol, and the and the symbol of Moroni, the Mormon symbol, makes for a, a great sports logo. <laughs> See the angel with the trumpet. Oh, that's a little bit uh, derivative there, isn't it? Yeah, they could get yeah. sued for that. Uh, they could, they could, well, this any any type of, of Christian uh, business venture is not original. It's it's a copy. Mm -hmm. They they say what is popular with today's worldly yeah. well, crowd. Like the, 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 let's the, use it. They have like the T-shirt that says you know Jesus inside instead of Intel inside. Well, the it's same, subliminal you know. messages. That's what that is. Uh. But I mean, after all, Christianity was just a cop off of pa older pagan religions. Right. Really? Yeah, it's all it's all how you market your business. Mormons have action figures now. Here's Captain Maroney. Bum, now Maroney is supposed to be an angel, but you see, you're not supposed to make graven images of you know anything that's in heaven. So he's been demoted to captain, so they can make an action figure. Of him. <laughs> and you got Lee He and his magic compass, the compass handed to him from God. So even God showers us with holy paraphernalia Himself. What a yeah. what a Why can't God just tell is. him where he needs to go? And so here, have a here's a compass. And there's Nephi, the master of arms. What's Nephi standing on there? Just um, it's a little like weapon holder. He has all these uh, weapons he can have when he oh, fights okay. people. Well, and you know, and there's the old Nephi t-shirt. Well, those are actually those are, yeah. a lot, those are cooler than the Bible man ones. I have to. 
No, they don't that? move though. They, yeah, oh, they don't. don't think they're. Yeah, they don't move. Also, oh, they're like they're little, little statuettes that you just pose on your. You yeah, know, they're advertised as action figures, but. But they. And don't. here you can make Amon and his sheep fight the evil King Noah and his leopard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fight. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're, these ones are actually kind of cool looking. And. Abinai in his torture position, so you can pretend to be the evil King Noah torturing Abinai. Kids will. Oh, so love like he's, that. yeah, he's like bound and has this. He's like yeah, that's all you can do something. with him. He can yeah. just torture this. Iron Maiden. Okay, maybe. that's getting kind of sick there. Uh. And there's a little whole action set where they can fight on Aztec ruins and <laughs> and stuff like that. Wow. Actually, that pyramid's kind of kind of bitching. It's kind of yeah. cool, yeah. yeah. But kind of expensive though. Well, still. You know, oh, it's... and this this is awesome. The Book of Mormon figure carrying case, modeled after, styled after the gold plates. Oh <laughs> yeah. Now if you yeah, know this... Mormon. If you know yeah. the background, there's these. It's like you know equivalent of Ten Commandments, but it's like made out of gold. These gold plates that have scripture on them. It's total bogus. These things. Yeah. Their their whole secret. mythology is based on this uh, legend that uh, God uh, engraved on solid gold plates his his gospel of Mor- his Mormon testament that gave him to. What, Joseph Smith? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah and uh, unfortunately, Mormon himself only comes in gold. Uh, He's too holy for plastic, so well, very, very expensive. So that's, that, that is like, well, is gold-plated something? Or is that solid gold? Could great I, I don't wear. know. It'd be like insanely know. expensive, but, well, we can't say how expensive it is, but still. And look, it's Elder Bear. Uh, <laughs> he has his little name tag and his little Book of Mormon, and so kids can go door to door with their little Elder Bear. That's and he has cute. a little name tag, even says Elder Bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I met a couple of these guys, right? You know, oh, there's yeah. those Mormon guys on bicycles, and they were doing and 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 they had their name yeah. tags, and it was like Elder, you know. Oh, and yeah, they, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, dudes, y'all are 22. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, they always bring a couple of like seventeen-year-old girls with them. And, well, had they, I would have you know talked to them longer. But it's still <laughs> well, that's, they, that's right, probably right. Yeah, that's no, but they <laughs> but they didn't. It's just these guys. And I'm like, what? Are, why are you elder? You know, what is the yeah, qualification right. to be an or, orgasmo? It's just yeah, the best that's, a great, yeah. yeah. that's a great. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great. And well. check it out. Mormon brass knuckles. Now, <laughs> the purpose, this is real. They sell uh, this on the Mormon website, <laughs> the Mother Church website. Uh, and what this is so they can knock loudly on the doors without hurting themselves. See, it's a very oh, practical use. They can chip your door paint. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be scary, though? You open the door and there's a gang of Mormons out there with, with brass, brass knuckles. knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they, no wonder people slam the door in their face. <laughs> and then my mi- missionary countdown clock and... That's kind of good silly. grief. And for Christmas, there's a Mormon sock Christmas reef selection you can order. Oh. I guess you can hang that on your door so people, you know, the Mormons will tell who else is Mormon and not bother. Oh, wait, it's all got socks it's, all over it. Yeah, it's a Christmas reef with Mormon socks all over it. Oh, it's okay. weird. They sell it like. <laughs> ah, well, I, the significance, the the, the 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 fixation with socks. Is it, is it multiple me. socks for your multiple wives? Oh, or yeah, that, I don't know. That's <clears> little bit. Yeah. And uh, Mormon underwear, we all know uh, about this. So <laughs> magical bulletproof Mormon underwear. Now, that, now this is now this one's for men, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. is that for men? Because it looked. I don't know. I was getting a little hot looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what gives it? What gives it the magic is really it's not the underwear itself, as Mormons will point out. That's a misunderstanding. It's actually the Masonic symbols over the nipples. Oh, ah, that's what gives uh, it its powers. Oh, they back, they on um, the yeah. Okay, yeah. That's a so zoom in, in of well, these look at two. That pose too. Wow. So it's an upside down V and a sort of uh, a it's like the protract and, like or a something. uniform C or something. Yeah, and this is supposed to do what? I don't know, but it made me ask myself, what would Jesus wear? And I found this painting here. Whoa! I, that, whoa! Holy now, mackerel. either Jesus is a little too tall, or that water is a little too. Ah. Tall. <laughs> Pure ah. Jesus. Whoa. And uh, paintings are fun. Lots thought, of paintings. I'm glad he wasn't walking on the water in that <laughs> shot. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. Eek. Now, this is interesting. This is a plate that uh, it appears Jesus is wearing a pink flowery dress. I couldn't figure that one out. That's oh. kind of small to see. And then this, this plate with the ragged edges, it's Bless. more like a Jesus throwing star than anything. <laughs> <laughs> now, last year at Holy Paraphernalia, I need to make a correction. I showed a painting of... Uh, what I thought was the baby Jesus holding a little cross, and I said it was his training cross. Mm-hmm. You know, that didn't see much sense in, in the baby Jesus having a cross. You know, what's right. up with that? And someone told me, an atheist, of course, only atheists would know this much about religion. They told me that actually it was it was uh, John the Baptist as a baby who created a little cross, which equally doesn't oh, make okay. any sense, and therefore is consistent with Christianity. Well, let's, let's do but, let's do let's do one more, and then take a okay. call, and then we'll go back to it. And, and okay, one more. I got to have... show you this picture, though. I did okay. find a picture of Jesus in his training cross, and. 
getting away in his nifty hay wagon, his sheep powered hay wagon, is what he escaped King Herod with, apparently. And there he is being chased by the Angel Mariachi Band. So, he's, so that's that's him in a little wagon, and they're running behind him, going, "Hey, you, come back here or something." And he's escaping King Herod in the sheep powered hay wagon with his uh, halo glowing. Wow. Well. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, yeah, we, yeah. Let's take a break. Let's take. We'll, a call. we'll take a break. We'll take. A, we have what we have a caller lined up, and there's uh, this. So let's know. He's, he's, he's been on the line for a while. He has. Too, so, so we'll. Uh, Hello, James. Yes. Hey, thanks for uh, waiting. Uh, no what, problem. So, uh, so what's your take on all this? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I just, I find it uh, very interesting. Um, um, do y'all remember I, I called two weeks ago? I'm the guy that that uh, David wanted to lock up. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You're you're the guy who oh, said you're wow. the guy who you're said you kill people. Well, no, well, well, show me for coming up. Well, <laughs> that didn't really come out the way I wanted it to come out. We like, hoped. We kind of thought that. Yeah. yeah. We we yeah. hope not. We yeah. Be- I don't think we believed. I, yeah, yeah, I think I mean, that the main point I was trying to get ac- across is, is based on the conclusions that I have taken from from you know the belief system that says there's no God. That that that's what the logical conclusion would be. I mean, I I, I definitely would not. And go that's out, really hard on us. We agree, we agree with that. that okay. that was the logical conclusion of, of you know yeah, your that, your start point that I came from. Okay. Yeah. Um, I also wanted just to do a quick uh, sort of an apology of, 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 of where things went last week. I, I sort of got into the gotcha phase. You remember that when I said I got gotcha? you? Yeah. Well, and that was not my intention to get that emotional. Like, oh, look, I got you. You know, that, that wasn't my intention. So well, I, you know, it's all in, in, the, in the spirit of, uh, you sure. know, spirited Plus debate. it's a live show, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's on the spirit of spirited debate. Um, sure. But, but the, 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 the point that I was trying to make was mm-hmm. that... Um, of, you know, yes, there are sound secular bases for you know making moral distinctions about things, and um, to uh, you, to claim that uh, that you cannot have any sort of basis for being able to make decisions as to what is beneficial or what is harmful or what is good and what is bad uh, can only come from some sort of source outside of ourselves. It doesn't really. It, I don't think it really addresses the issue it doesn't really provide any explanations um and for some reason we're back on jesus yeah, baby no jesus being right chased now. by the yeah <laughs> but that was that was the point that we were trying to make uh, it's uh, that there are all sorts of sound reasons why um without appealing to any kind of supernatural authority you know you can have a basis for for determining what is moral and what is immoral okay um i guess really it's definitely a, a philosophical dis- disagreement between the two of us as to <laughs> where um humans get this idea of what is right and what is wrong and I and I consider myself a rational person so not a person and I like to use logic and reason I, I'm actually an engineering major at the university so I, I am definitely for uh, human beings you know would this be civil engineering no chemical Wow <laughs> surprise <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, so I, I've taken all the chemistries, organic and inorganic, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, I and I am all for uh, scientific research, you know, and the scientific mm-hmm. method, and, yeah. and and we definitely have our philosophical disagreements. Though I would say, you know, like I said, I would say that I have that that I use reason and logic and and other things to to come up with, you know, my idea of what is right and what is wrong, and I and I appeal to a higher being, and and, mm-hmm. and y'all don't, obviously. So we definitely have a disagreement. Well, but, what we do is we appeal to what. Um, we know is the cultural consensus that, uh, you know, we live in, you know, uh, morality or what we call, or if you want to call it ethics or codes of behavior have, are, you know, they, they come from us. They come from people determining what is the best way in which we can all get along. Because if we couldn't all get along and we simply had just some sort of moral anarchy where everyone was going out committing any violent act they felt fit to commit, well, then the, our species itself would not be here. We would not survive. So it is just simply a matter of practical necessity that uh, we must come up with rules of behavior that we can all agree upon in which to live together. And these have developed over time. I mean, there were times when, for example, it was acceptable uh, by you know, the codes of the given culture to, uh, to uh, possess slaves. Uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, according to uh, Old Testament law, it was acceptable... Um, you know the the rules were that, um, for example, if you you know your 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 daughter was raped, her rapist had to pay the father fifty shekels and was forced to marry the daughter, and no one sort of asked the daughter's opinion of all this. But at the time, that was what the culture accepted as being the morally correct thing to do. So these things do change over time, but human we're learning creatures, and you know human beings are, and so we learn what works and what doesn't work by the simple trial and error process. And uh, 
uh, hopefully we, we will learn, I mean, from our mistakes and not continue to make the same mistakes over again. But from, the, you know, from there, it's a, it's a simple uh, explanation for why the idea that there is simply one inviolable set of rules that must be adhered to very inflexibly at all times, I don't think is a defensible position. Um, because clearly there are, in the majority of instances, we can say that there are moral principles and standards that apply but you will find yourself in situations where those principles don't apply, where the principles uh, you may need to be um, adapted to the circumstance. For example, if you know, I gave the old uh, opinion, you know, the, the old uh, um, example of uh, lying, which in most in most cases, I think most people would consider to be uh, morally objectionable and questionable and not very nice. But if you're in a situation of warfare. You know, where you may, you know, the enemy wants you to cough up state secrets and, you know, uh, I, I think under that you'd be per that's a perfectly acceptable situation under which you can lie to throw them off the scent, as it were, you know, to, to uh, in fact, it's one of the many ways that we, the Allies, won World War II was because uh, not only was, you know, Hitler and the Axis completely incompetent, you know, with a two-front war, but we also waged a very successful disinformation campaign where we sprayed all, you know, just we hit all of this phony propaganda throughout uh, Europe and demoralized the enemy. So, um, and had we not done that, you know, the, the war might have turned out very differently. So, well, we aim to try to keep a world where we don't have to lie. Yeah, I mean, you want to avoid, you want to avoid the warfare getting into that situation in the first place, but in situations where you can't, and, and these tend to be situations where people do uh, commit the kinds of moral anarchy that... Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the moral absolutist sphere, what happen if you don't have a, a supernatural uh, authority for, uh, for morality, then in, in cases where you have these kinds of violations, well, sometimes there's no other way to deal with the person. There really was no other way to deal with Adolf Hitler. There's no other way to deal with Osama bin Laden. But for the most part, we try to live together as a species and get along and like each other. And whether, and if we believe different things, you know, we can, you know, uh, respecting the rights, respecting the rights of people to have different opinions and different viewpoints on stuff. Still, there's no reason to just go out. There's, there's no reason to do it. You don't get anything out of just committing acts of random uh, crime atro mm -hmm. atrocities, unless you know you're loopy, right? But, but and I don't even lie. I'm very strong against lying. It's for my own good. It's because I'm selfish. I don't lie. Yeah. I'm not going to get anything out of that. I mean, if you're caught lying once in your life, then people can't trust you for the rest of your life. That's, yeah. That's important. Yeah, that was also, I had to learn as, as a teenager, I was very big into just like telling little white lies. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. Afraid of just, because uh, I was afraid that if I was honest, I just might get in trouble. But then that I found it. got me into trouble. Yeah, but then I found out I that, that, you know, yeah, it had, up to a certain age it happened. But then, you know, I, if I just, look, hey, I'm sorry, I messed up, I did this thing I shouldn't have done. And, what I, and people actually respect you for more for yes. your candor. Then, if you try to concoct some elaborate BS story to get you know get yourself out of a situation, morality has great rewards in this life. It's enough. Well, oh, okay, um, that this really wasn't the, the the original intention of my call. Well, we just you know we got into it. Okay, um, we just like to hear ourselves talk. Sure, <laughs> um, it's our show. They, what I really wanted to talk to you all about is is really I, I have a pretty good understanding I think of what y'all's idea of what separation of church and state means and how it should apply to the society. Um, could y'all just give me a quick explanation of that so I know for sure that I'm right in, in what y'all think separation church and state means? Because I have a different take on that. Do you want to start? Well, uh, I, I would say that it simply means uh, uh, government neutrality in religion. Government not choosing uh, one religion over any other religion or religion over, over uh, you know, non-religion. Uh, just, just simple neutrality, letting uh, American citizens be free to worship as they please, where they please in the manner that they please, and not having the government in, in, in any manner in terms of endorsement or implying agreement or disagreement with it. Okay. Um, if you have a specific thing you'd like to bring up, that's fine. Sure, sure. Um, and I agree with you that the government should stay out of our personal lives and we should be free to worship and, and to, to believe whatever we want. And I, I, I agree with you on that. Where I might disagree with you is that I've heard you all on many occasions advocate the removal of of symbols from the public sector, such as the Ten Commandments and uh, the Cross of Jesus and, and, and prayer in, in public sectors, when what I see is when, when that happens, when, 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 that, when, the, when the court rules that, 
that sent, that those symbols are taken out and that there are no symbols of Christianity or any other religion, what that does, I see, is, is symbolize, symbolize your belief system. So in the sense, the government isn't being system. neutral. Yeah. Or, well, well, not, not really, because here's the thing. If, if we wanted our, as you call it, belief system or, you know, a uh, system of, of non-belief uh, uh, endorsed by the government, then the government would could say put up a a, uh, yeah. a monument saying you know there is no God or you know atheism yeah. is the way to go, which I would not agree with either. It's not the government's position. However, if you you don't have to have that Ten Commandments monument on the courthouse lawn because what you're doing is is the point of that is trying to to say look the government agrees with us on the Ten Commandments issue, but you know that courthouse lawn is still available for Christians to gather and have you know, uh, prayer meetings or rallies, mm -hmm. that, that lawn is available for everyone to come and protest or rally or have, a, a, you mm -hmm. know, a prayer meeting, anything that they want, uh, or for me to have a protest or a rally against yeah. that sort of thing. But when it comes to putting up monuments, if you're going to have the government put up one monument, then you can't stop them. They, they'd have to provide a good reason for not putting up other monuments. If you've got one of the Ten Commandments, then a Satanist could come up and say, I want a monument to Satan, and the government would have no say in not putting that up. From a strictly legal perspective. From a perspective. strictly, right. stri yeah. strictly yeah. legal, There's, fair access to that land yeah. type of position. There is, a, there is a common mistake that is made uh, among folks in thinking that if you're just not talking about God, then that's promoting atheism. And, it's, and that's not. I mean, atheism is, is, is a position where you say, we don't believe in a God, and it's a very specific philosophical stance. Um, a position of complete neutrality towards religion is, it's secular. It, you know, it's, it's just, it's not showing any sort of preference for any opinion as regards religion, pro or con. It is, it's neutral towards religion. Atheism is not a position that's neutral towards religion. We say, we don't believe in it. So it's not promoting atheism simply to remove religious plaques or religious monuments from places where, again, if you put one up and you don't put others, now what you do have is a case of imbalanced and uh, an unfair government endorsement of one over all others. And I would like to stress that I would vehemently oppose putting up a monument to atheism yes. on government property as much as I oppose a Ten Commandments monument. It would be the exact same uh, endorsement, which yeah. is not the government's it, job. It would, it would be not, just... It's not their position. It, not would their be, authority. it would be just as unconstitutional for the government to have, and, and you know, the atheist symbol of right. the, you know, the atomic world, right. the, or, or, a, or a statement critical of religion and on I, a public and ground. I am it would not be just as, as unconstitutional. I mean, I'm not as hard hardcore as you, as you might think in terms of, I don't think that government recognition is the same as government endorsement. In, in terms of, they have had cases where uh, they've had a, 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 a nativity scene on a courthouse, and people complained, and the court said, you have to take that down. But then uh, the, the courthouse just put up a nativity scene, and they had a Santa Claus, and they had a menorah. Uh, you know, they, they had a whole bunch of different things that, that really just recognized, I, I think, that there's recognized a that this is a holiday, and these are the many ways in which Americans in general recognize a holiday. I personally don't have a problem with that. I, I don't. I mean, there, there are some atheists that may. I, I don't mm. think that government recognition that, yes, people believe this or people believe that is the mm. same as endorsement. Yeah. But so, then for things that would be up every day, though. Like, right. So you can't have a Ten Commandments, Koran, Torah, an eight statue of Buddha, and you just, you'd fill every public place with all this religious paraphernalia. Yeah, there wouldn't be any room you, on the, in the lawn left. Right. Yeah, and, and um, you know, it, and it'd just be people arguing theology all day in the public school. So what, yeah. What's your take on, on okay, that? Okay, well, what, what I would, I would still, I would still have to say that I, I disagree with you when, when you say that you think the government should be neutral in all religious matters, because whenever the government passes a law, whenever a court, whether it be the Supreme Court or a lower court, makes a ruling, or, and, and then when, when we look at what principles should be taught in the public schools, one or, a, one or a group of belief systems or religions, you know, and I would be inclined to say that they're sort of the same thing, um, is going to be reflected, and some are not. Because when you have, let's just say, for example, when, you, when we had in 1973, we had the Supreme Court ruling of Roe v. Wade. That ruling established a law which was effective in the entire nation. And there was one group of people 
that believed in that ruling and agreed with that ruling. There was another group of people that did not. Now, so the government took a moral stance that reflects one belief system, but not another. And so I would still, so I, again, I would say that I have to disagree with you Doesn't that the government has to take moral well, stances well. that reflects a belief system, but not others, because we're never going to have 100% consensus on pretty much everything. And obviously there are yeah, things that we do have consensus about, but not on issues that we that we as Americans find tough, like abortion and homose- you know, how, how homosexuals should be treated and whether or not there should be prayer in school and stuff like that. Well, that, that is very true. We're never going to find 100% consensus on every subject. I think that's what makes our nation great. Uh, in the case of the abortion ruling, I, I do, it's, it's, it is a very, um, you know, again, now that's a very contentious issue. Um, I think the, the, those who favor, um, <clears throat> okay, I'm being told by uh, someone in, the, in, the crowd, in our studio audience that Roe v. Lay just said you can't make a law, what, against, that pro- prohibiting? Prohibiting access to any whatever it said, the, what you have on the one hand, you have the the uh, supporters of Roe v. Wade, whom I think see abortion as a social issue as well as a, a medical and health issue for women. Political issue too. And 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 um, well, it, it becomes politicized when it enters the, the legislative realm, right. regardless. But um, and then you have the opponents of abortion who. For a large part, uh, their their objections, uh, while in some cases maybe health based, are are religiously based as well. Although again, it's 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 not accurate to say that all opponents of abortion are are Christian or even religious. I know right. there, however, there is an atheist uh, anti, there is an atheist pro choice. Right. It's or, not. It's, I mean, pro life. It's not uh, completely there. clear which religion or viewpoint uh, won out in that because there is a long list of religious organizations that have backed. Roe v. Wade, mm-hmm. a long right. list of them, and, and there are no specific um, uh, prohibition against uh, abortion in Scripture because it, it was not known That's as a right. yeah, it was not known as a procedure at that time. I guess. But, but like my, my main point is again is that when when that ruling was made, you know, the seven to two ruling, mm-hmm. a you know a, a group a, a certain group of people, their belief system was reflected because the government took a stance in agreement with their belief system, and another yeah. a group. But of I'm people, saying it wasn't necessarily a religious. Matter, but it was a in, moral matter, and, and, and abortion and many other issues is a, is a moral issue. And yeah, but but, yeah, but but so but so is murder, you know. So is rape and theft and robbery and all the you know. Right, and, and, and to an extent, I mean, all, all of these issues too. All of these laws are yeah. I mean, we do have laws against things that we consider to be morally and and ethically objectionable. Whether or not though that, that uh, we come to that from either a religious uh, background or a secular background, I think it's really kind of beside the point. But again, you're right, though, the, the, you know, the, the, there is still, you know, again, the fact that the law was passed, that Roe v. Wade was passed, of course, doesn't, it may, you know, for the time being, settle the issue legally, and, and you can, but, but it doesn't prohibit people from continuing to take a stance of opposition if they so choose. And obviously, there's a huge, you know, anti-abortion, you know, pro-life uh, contingent out there that's very active, and they still think that, uh, you know, that it is, it's objectionable it's more morally objectionable to allow abortions than it is to permit them. So it's not still 100% settled. Again, that I think is, is what makes our system of government very sound, is that you know, it's not, we don't have this dictatorial situation where in a totalitarian sense, a law is just handed down. And once it's handed down, that's the end of it. You can't say a word uh, against it. If you do, you get sent off to the gulag. It's not like that here. So, um, yes, you're right. I mean, our laws that are, are the, the, the fact that we do make laws based upon what we think is either right or wrong. I think in the case of Roe v. Wade, and the, the Supreme Court voted the way they did, I imagine, because they felt that the, the, uh, the medical arguments or the whatever, whatever arguments were presented uh, by, you know, the, the um, pro-choice camp at the time were, were more sound and uh, more persuasive than the... Uh, arguments put forth by the anti-abortion uh, people at the time. Uh, but that's not to say that that won't change and there are going to continue to be fights and, and debates and, and legislations about it. But listen, James, yes. we, we've enjoyed the heck out of sure. talking to you, and but we've, we've been on now for quite a long time. Right. We want to go ahead and get to a couple more callers, okay. but call us back any time, man, okay? I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, let's go to Joe on two. And uh, thanks, Joe. Hi. Hi, thank you for holding for so long. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I uh, kind of my question was kind of uh, 
answered a little bit right, in the goodbye. last session. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a feeling you were going to do that. But uh, what you guys, I guess, are saying is that your position on uh, moral absolutes is really up to a group of people. Is that what you're saying? Well, what I'm saying is that I don't think that there are moral absolutes, although I do think that there are moral principles okay. that, that apply in most circumstances, and those moral principles were devised by, you know, people attempting to, I mean, <laughs> create civilizations in which we could all live together. And you think that the moral attributes, I guess you might say, that we have in America are the correct ones? Well, um, I, I don't know that, well, if, if, if you mean to say, do I agree with every single law that's on the books, I, I would have to probably go over the U.S. Code, and I, I don't think I would agree with that. Right, I, I think that... that the, 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 the laws that we have in our country, generally speaking, and, and particularly the ones that are consistent with laws, similar laws around the world, you know, there, I think there are, there, are, there are principles that work, okay? Like having prohibitions against, uh, you know, murder or stealing or, or any other thing that causes, in which you have one person causing harm to another person, they just make sense. You know, well, I mean, they make sense from a very practical standpoint. It, it's, well, it's better to determine laws this way well, than first, grabbing onto the oldest holy book you can find. Well, even even um, it's it's just it's it. it's whatever whatever your sort of I mean, I, the most sensible source right for coming up with any sort of moral decision that you're going to make is the fact, and it's an observable fact, that your actions have consequences. Well, guys, if you notice that America has the very highest murder rate probably in the whole world, I guess our laws aren't. You know, working too correctly, but I mean, uh, it's awful arrogant for us to say that our laws are better than another country. I don't think I mean, we're well, I, I know I'm I, a libertarian. Yeah, I never. I don't agree with. Like I said, I, I never said that. I, I never said that. I think our laws are the greatest in the world. But the fact yeah. is, you know, in 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 principle, right? Well, no. My point is that that man making laws versus the Bible making laws is a big difference. You can go to Singapore, and you know Singapore has one of the lowest murder rates as well as all the other crimes. Just stack them up and look at the statistics, and you can see how they're so much more effective in battling crimes, rapes, uh, thefts, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? Well, I don't, I don't know. That, I, don't, I used to live in Singapore when, uh, when uh, I was about 10 years old. Um, it's changed a lot since then. But, again, I remember that they, they did have very, very strict laws about stuff and they have to they have to because singapore is a is a uh, autonomous state that exists on an island that is about 22 square miles so in i mean in order for their city to function yes they have to be very very strict about the laws that they um that they pass and and they have to be very very strict in the enforcement of that um you know because they have again a very very small and tightly knit community, and also they have to deal with, uh, because they're so small, they have to deal with a lot of outside influences. When I was living there, the drug trade through Malaysia into the to South China Sea and Southeast Asia was horrendous. And the only way they could deal with it was through the most draconian laws imaginable. If you, I mean, if you're, if you're trafficking, you know, if you're, if you get possession with intent in America will get you a few years, possession with intent in Singapore will get you beheaded. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing now, but again, Arabia. but those, but those laws, again, they, they, they are in the circumstance that they're in, in order to make their tiny little autonomous self, you know, reliant government function. Um, they have to look at what are the, what would be the consequences to our little piece of the earth uh, if we were to not be this strict. Oh, that's not true. And Saudi well, Arabia has the same uh, low crime rate. Um, and, and you make, can't make that comparison just because they're a small island. That's not the reason they have strict laws. That's ridiculous. Well, I, I live there. I mean, I know that that's the reason that they have these laws. Well, then why about uh, Saudi Arabia? And then how come they have such... Well, know, Saudi Arabia's laws, again, are based on the Quran. I mean, you know, they're, they're going to... They're, they're, they, they have a theocracy over there. Yeah, but there's another side to that. You're saying... Uh, the, you know, the, the low crime rate is the, is the be-all, end-all of everything, but there's also an issue of civil liberties involved. Uh, which mm -hmm. is where where I come in with a disagreement. Uh, you know, it's a give and take. We live in a society, uh, and you're going to have crime in a society. We also we want to get a balance between 
stopping crime and still respecting people's civil liberties. Well, how come Freedom. England? How come in England? You've been to England, any of you guys? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. How come if you've too. ever noticed the bobbies, which are the policemen? They don't even yeah. carry guns. Murder, I'm sorry, we I missed that. You know the bobbies? Yeah, what right? They over in England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't carry they guns. They don't carry guns, and right. the reason they don't is because they also don't have a very high murder rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And England is not a very small island, and they don't have. I mean, I don't think they. I think they probably have. Yeah, but why? Well, I, I, gun laws too. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I mean, mean, what? Are, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I mean, you. What are the multiple factors? What? What is your point? What is what is the factor that you... you yeah, obviously, I, there's you, one you, factor here that you say ties all this together. What is it? It is that people are going to a source and using that for the derivative of moral absolutes. So the Koran in Saudi Arabia is the source, our, and therefore laws. that's good? I'm sorry? The Koran is the source of Saudi Arabia, so that's good? Uh, I think there's a lot of things that the Koran has copied from the, today's Bible. If you'll well, go and look at the Quran, well, the there's Quran a lot that the Bible copied from other religions. I mean, the, the point is, you know, in, in Saudi, remember, Saudi Arabia, right? Now, we just mentioned this at the beginning of the show. This is where the authorities allowed 15 schoolgirls to burn to death in a burning building because they weren't wearing the proper Muslim clothing uh, to, to, uh, to allow them to be sufficiently virtuous to walk in public. So I don't think that they have a terribly sound uh, moral basis for whatever they determine their laws to be. A but, 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 but a fallacy that you're making, I think, is that um, you're assuming that situations either politically or sociologically in one country in the world are, will, will be precisely the same in another and in no, another no. and in another, and, no, and that's I'm, not really what, what fits. No, what I'm saying is that you guys, I'm sure you believe in evolution, is that all three of you, if you believe in evolution, that we have no value in your eyes in life, other than that's what absolutely you value, false. Other what you value in life, that's absolutely false. Well, For one thing, well, hang on, hang on. Minute, let me, minute. Joe, let me if, respond if, to that. If you have, if you evolve from primordial slime and, and you actually have no values established in my eyes, but you have it in your eyes, I don't care. I can go and chop your head off, yeah. and it means absolutely nothing. It's just like chopping down a tree. Well, but that's completely bogus. That is one of the most pathetic, pathetic misunderstandings. Evolution is about biology, okay? It has nothing to do with the formation of a person's value system or moral system. Evolution is simply a biological theory that discusses how uh, complex Come life forms nowhere, developed from simple nowhere. life forms. It has nothing to do with a person's value systems. It, it, value but, systems are determined by the individual. You but know, no, and you the fact told that, me the value system was determined by the group. Well, now with the group, what is a group? A group is a collection of individuals. Yes. Okay, a group, so, a, so a group is a collection of individuals, individuals reaching a Joe, Joe. A group is a collection of individuals reaching a consensus. Okay. So okay. Hitler and his group of individuals who came to consensus that it was all right to murder the Jews, and you're saying that's what that happened that's okay. there. But what happened to Adolf Hitler? Okay, mm -hmm. the world in Toto said, "Hey, this guy's a bad guy," and we went to war against him and we kicked his butt. Okay. But again, it's, it's not to say, all right, that just whatever you say goes. I mean, yes, there will be deviations. Yes, there are going to be people who make the wrong decisions and who do bad things. It's not a guarantee that everyone will, even if you believe in moral absolutes, it's not a guarantee that everybody is going to adhere to those and, and follow them through uh, either consistently or logically or even to the benefit of if people. Your, if your government came today and said, I want all three of you guys to take a mark, I want you to be Mark. You cannot buy anything in the stores. You cannot live. You cannot function. <laughs> Mark I'm just asking you the general question, just in the abstract. What would you guys, would you say, I will take that Mark? I would refuse. I would want the details refuse, of it first, but I would refuse. Hmm? And then you don't live any longer. Your life as you see it will no, not exist. Would they would shoot me for it? Yes. I'd leave the country. Yeah, I mean, you'd leave the country. Yeah, the, the point is, no, because I'm no longer living in America, I'm right. living in Bible fantasy land. No, yeah. I'm just yeah. asking yeah. you a very simple answer. You're describing question. Mark of the Beast. This, really this is a this is the paranoia world. This is what happens, okay? I mean, it's if, very if, simple if question. we have a government you know, answer. I gave you my answer. Right? Yeah. He would not take the mark. I wouldn't either. No, neither would I. And you would be shot. That's the only Well, no, because what would happen is there would probably be about 220 million other Americans who wouldn't take the mark either. And I'll right. bet you a bottom and dollar you're wrong. There would be a few markers well, at first, but that wouldn't last long. Yeah, there that wouldn't. be enough people You have to understand, that. our government, as it's set up, has a system of checks and balances, and you cannot get any sort of dictator just coming along saying, everybody will get this demonic 666 tattoo or get shot. Oh, it doesn't no. work that way over here. 
God, okay? Look, let me it tell doesn't you. work that way over here. If, if it occurs in your lifetime, you've been warned. And you okay, know all right, we've been whatever, warned. Thank you. Know. you. Yes, yeah. you're telling crazy. us this Yeah, we, we've been telling warned. Us. and uh, Yeah, but well, hopefully our alien mothership will come and take us away before that happens. <laughs> uh, we have, yeah, we'll take Manny first, and then we'll uh, get to uh, let's see what he has to say. about uh, Manny. Hey. Uh, thank you for holding. What can we do for you? Man, these guys just amaze me. Don't they, though? Yeah. God, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. You know, they, like, want to go all over the place. You know, they, they don't want to hear you, you know. They ask you a question, you answer, then they go somewhere else. You know, so you so you won't have to answer them. Well, so here's the, here, here's what here's what gets here's what gets me about this whole in, this this whole inflexible position that morality can only come from some sort of inviolable supernatural source. Right, right. First off, what it says is that you know you, you can't think for yourself as a person. That seems to be what is at the core of it. Sure. And it's also rooted, I think, in what I consider to be a very misanthropic belief that is that is at the core of Christianity. That is, people are inherently evil and sinful. You have a natural tendency towards evil and sin, and you're separated from God. That's why you need Jesus in the first place in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, the, the problem is that when we're talking to these guys, right, we are in a way, we've got crossed wires, because their whole argument is based upon a premise that we just don't flat accept, which is people are bad. And we, as humanists, we don't really accept that. I mean, humanists generally have a very pro-people attitude towards life and we're like no well people i mean sure you make mistakes and you do good things and bad things but most people try to do the right thing in other words you try to do things that are beneficial for the world you live in more so than things that are harmful and And it's very practical actions have consequences use your eyes think for yourself why is it like it's not rocket science and i think evolution does come into play that i think man has evolved to be Lean towards inherently good, not evil. If anything, well, or we would not have survived as a species if we were all killing and stealing from each other. It's it's not, it's it's what we have. What we have where evolution comes into the picture is that a we have an evol- evolved instinct towards self preservation. Yes. Okay, that's one. And secondly, we have an, another instinct towards the preserva- to the protection of our offspring. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And and as you mentioned on the show last week, we're empathic. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, if we get hurt, right, something, ow, you know, if we get hurt, we can, hmm, let's see, if that hurt me, maybe the same thing would hurt him and would hurt him and would hurt all of those people. And I don't want we them can, to do it to me because yeah. I know how bad it feels and I'm not going to do it to them. It's just putting, it's just connecting the dots two and two together. I mean, so, so there are just, so that's where evolution comes into play is this, this evolved instinct that we have towards self-preservation and the preservation of our young you know, it, you know, uh, leads to this, you know, cert- species survival. Well, you know, that's what I don't understand. What they don't understand, right? So, so you know what the Church of the Subgenius says, don't you? <laughs> wow, they say some interesting things. Don't yeah. they? They, say, they say that you can't use logic when you're talking about religion. <laughs> Well, you can. You just can get all kinds of wrong answers. But I mean, you know, you, you can get any. If you want to have strict logical arguments, sure. You have, you know, all all gerbils die. Uh, George Washington is dead. Therefore, therefore, George Washington was a gerbil. <laughs> that's that's logic. Yeah, logic. That's and that's inviolable logic. Yeah, but uh, yeah, lots of people hey, like to. So say yeah, that I mean, uh, yeah, but but evolution. Logic behind it. No, but, uh, to, to, but to elaborate, just because I don't want you guys to go, what? you just contradict him. So look, evolution doesn't have anything to do with like specific intellectual choices that we make based upon you know whether like. It's it's correct to lie in time, to kill in times of war, but not in times of peace and yeah, things we don't like that. Inherit. But in a, ge- in a in a in a system of general principle, yeah, it's the the instinct that we have towards self preservation that I think allows us to be able to determine, in a secular sense, just using our minds and thinking about it, what sound moral principles or ethical principles would be that we live under. Hey, I also wanted to tell you that. Uh, the uh, action figures and stuff. Oh yeah. We well, hopefully we'll get time to get. Hopefully we'll get time to get they're, back to. They're very what? They're entertaining. I loved oh, it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love you guys it. are great. Well, thanks. We well, glad you liked the show. I Manny. loved it, man. All right, man. Thank well, you very uh, much. Thanks for watching and uh, call back anytime. Okay, bye. I'm, I'm always so glad to hear that there's other non-believers out there who can get a kick off of this stuff too, because I would yeah. hate to be the only one. I yeah. <laughs> question my own sanity. No, no. All this, <laughs> collecting all this stuff. Well, so sorry. <laughs> uh, and just to remind all of our unbelievers about our bagel shop meetings at 10:30 on Sunday mornings at, at Hot Jumbo Bagels. That's on Fifth Street. And uh, you know, if you want to meet other unbelievers and say hi, you know, we'd love to meet you too. Uh, oh, look, Jeff D's on line one. Let's see what he has to say about all this. 
Hello. Hi, guys. Hey, Jeff. How, are, how are you? I'm good. Good. Uh, I, I have some comments. I'm sure you do. Uh, <laughs> in response it. to your first caller, I'm so, okay. who, uh, who attempted to argue that since the government had uh, uh, passed laws uh, pertaining to abortion, mm -hmm. and since rel various religions have various points of view on the, relig on the abortion question, that that violates the separation of church and state, right? Or that that establishes a religious viewpoint. Right. What he does not understand is that while there is a separation of church and state, there is not separation of morality and state. Mm -hmm. states, the state is not prohibited from passing rules about what behaviors are going to be legal or not. Mm -hmm. Morality, or uh, the, a, a particular religion's view on an individual issue of morality, is only a tiny part of a religion. You do not represent the entire religion by viewing, by by uh, by ruling its way or opposite to its way on a particular moral issue. Yeah. Okay. As so, David pointed out, there are a lot of pro-choice Christians. Oh yeah. Right, yeah. right. So that that was just completely bogus. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, your second caller, who uh, I suspect was Steve the Creationist, uh, well, sounded an awful lot like his voice. It, it hmm. did, although he's never decided to change his name before. But maybe. yeah, he he mentioned. Uh, I'm being told yes, he did. Uh, and okay. uh, uh, he mentioned England's low crime rate. I wonder if he is aware that, according to the Archbishop of Canterbury, it's in an atheist a nation yeah. that he made uh, last year or the year before, that England is an atheist nation, mm, right. that the yeah, church right. has failed in England, has mm -hmm. failed to, main to maintain a place of relevance in people's lives, <laughs> and lest the caller uh, think that I am spinning the Archbishop of Canterbury's words and try to make it apply in a place where it doesn't, specifically, the Archbishop of Canterbury said that have England, the quote that you're England, reading, right? I don't have the exact words, but, okay. the, but specifically he referred to the fact that people in England do not, just do not believe that they have immortal souls, the fate of which they need to worry about, which is specifically the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the carrot dangled over the heads of people who believe in that stuff to get them to follow the moral rules of a religion. Mm -hmm. Also, so I, like I, I do remember, I, I remember specifically the Archbishop of Canterbury, he used, a phrase that he used was, quote, a tacit atheism prevails right. in England. Right. Uh, amongst the, uh, the populace. Right. But, uh, but yeah, again, it, the, the fallacy that Collar was making was assuming that every single, every, the circumstances in every single country are the same. Right. You brought up one thing about one, one particular uh, nation, right? Uh -huh. That happened to be on a small island, yeah. and he's going like, "Well, you know, uh, you know, so you, since you brought up that issue, that issue is now going to be the yardstick by, wi by which we will examine all these other nations." No, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia is different from England, is different from America. There's different conditions in every nation, sure, and their religion is only part of it. Yeah, so, but the important question is, Jeff, would you take the mark of the beast? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would need to know. Uh, okay, first yeah, of all, yeah. if I knew. Suddenly, right? If I knew that this mark uh, was some kind of plot by cosmic beings beyond our realm to control us, <laughs> then I wouldn't take it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But if somebody, but since I don't believe in cosmic beings from beyond our realm trying to control us, if somebody said, you know, here is a system that we're th that we want to implement, and here is how it will benefit our society, and here is how it will Im improve our lives and enable us to. Uh, to get things done more efficiently, and if they made a good case, of course I would take it. Yeah. It dep would depend on the on on all the actual facts sur surrounding it, as opposed to the yeah. you know wild well, way, screaming fear. If you don't of take it, you're going to be shot. If you do take it, you're going to hell. So you're just yeah. screwed either way. <laughs> you but know? now I saw something on uh, news recently. I believe it was on CNN saying that there has been a co a company, a corporation that has developed a chip designed to be implanted in the skin uh -huh. uh, for, for whatever purposes, I don't know. Um, now, whether or not it's going to catch on is beyond me. But I don't, again, this whole chicken little parano paranoid conspiracy scenario of the government forcing us at gunpoint to do this kind of thing simply just is... Uh, they is, watched that cheesy 70s movie that got them all going. Yeah, yeah. you know, so... But, but, it also, but it bears nothing that this whole number of the beast argument has been, you know, I mean... 
when credit cards came right. into being, they, they, they said cards. that Lines. was the number of the beast. That was Driver's the Driver's licenses. Driver's licenses Social were the mark. security numbers. And Let us not forget that each and, and every market. one of those, well, yeah. each, and six, when six, each six, and every one of those things was introduced, right. six, six, we had six screaming the fundamentalists. The beast, right? Please, let me finish. Uh, we had screaming fundamentalists every time one of those was introduced saying, oh, this is going to be the mark of the beast now. This here, right here, that's the one, right? Uh, After which, if we dollar. allow that, yeah. then it's going to be the end times. And they've been wrong every single time. Sure. And their paranoid fears of how it was going to be used have been wrong every single time. Yeah, it's just, it's, this is the fear-based indoctrination that these guys undergo that the religious, their religious leaders subject them to in order to make them members and make them obedient and right. docile, you know. And, and, and guys, six, 666 is the number of the beast, uh -huh. and 668 is the neighbor of the beast, actually. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, yeah. these people, if these people are worried about, uh. Uh, about programs of manipulation, that will turn them into mere uh, playthings of a larger organization that will use them to its advantage. I think they're already they there. To go yeah. and look who's standing behind the pew, the, yeah. behind, <laughs> the, behind the podium next time they go to church. Yeah. That is where they will find the big organization that is manipulating <laughs> them to its advantage. Yeah. Uh, could you could you guys put uh, this line on hold so I can hand the phone to Amanda? Um, sure, go ahead. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, right. definitely. Bye. Okay, well, that's we have, one. We have like four minutes left. Yeah, we only have four yeah. minutes left, so I do want to get to Mike and uh, on two. Hello, Mike? Yeah. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, thanks. Hey, listen, I just wanted to uh, say that, you know, you can argue creationism versus evolution. Uh, you can you can discuss that till we're all blue in the face. Well, creationists are more interested in arguing it than we are, but... Well, the bottom line is, is here in America, America was founded on, founded by people who were looking for freedom in all forms, uh, mainly uh, in religion. And so, you know, you guys, everybody has the freedom to choose what they want to, want to believe, but the laws of this country were founded in religious-based beliefs. Wrong on the, the common law. law. In so, fact, that being said, uh, that, that, being said, said that, that, that being said, we that being said, we will now refute it. Yeah. Um, here it is. Uh, this is from Thomas Jefferson in a letter to Major John Cartwright disputing the claim of a biblical basis for our laws. The common law existed while the Anglo-Saxons were yet pagans, at a time when they never yet yet heard the name of Christ pronounced or knew that such a character had ever existed. And John Adams in the Treaty of Tripoli in uh, 1797, wrote very specifically, the government of the United States is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. Uh, no, I'm so, not saying that. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that the majority of people that pioneered this country were probably Christian. Majority. Uh, that's debatable, not too. All of them. Yeah, and we can debate that, but that's not the point. The point yeah. is... Well, well the, the point... Well, if, right now, what, what, go ahead, what's the point? Okay. The, pe the point is that the pe the majority of the people that sat down and wrote the original laws of this country, which we still live by today, uh, and the moral code that we live by today as Americans, um, those laws were based in a belief system in some form of religion, period, whether that be Christianity or Judaism or whatever it is, it was it's based not, in religious beliefs. So. Well, again, again, as I said, these, there are ethical principles that predate uh, the religious sources. Um, we're, Arist talking Aristotle we're talking about our country today. We're not talking yeah, but about... I mean, well, no, you just said, you just said that the morals that we have, that we base our laws upon, are based upon ancient religious traditions, okay? And then suddenly you want to say, oh, no, 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 wait, we're only talking about America today. The point is... Uh, the there have been uh, there is a long-standing tradition of secular ethics dating all the way back to Aristotle, and uh, many religious traditions, including all the ones that led up to the Judeo-Christian tradition that prevails today, took idea. Everybody basically cannibalized everybody, and whether you had uh, whether you had secular philosophies of the Greeks uh, versus uh, religious philosophies of um, you know other cultures, the Judeo-Christian or otherwise Babylonian, what have you. The fact is that there is no real necessity to uh, fall back upon any kind of supernatural source for making your moral decisions. And our laws are based upon a multiplicity of sources, not simply one religion's holy book. Anyway, we're out of time. We're down to 30 seconds, so we got to let you go. Please call back. Please call back. And we're sorry, Paul, we didn't get to you this week. 
Um, check our website, atheist-community.org, the fact page. I want to thank our guest, thank Arlo. Arlo. Hey, Arlo, you want to be back next week, do more of this? I would love to. Arlo right. will be back yeah, next be week, do more holy paraphernalia. That's Thanks right. again to David. Thanks to all of our callers. Uh, check infidels.org also for more uh, secular ethics positions. Uh, there are some good essays there. Christians, we don't hate you. We, we just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong. Bye. Next week, same time, 4.30.